it episode 99 of Unstuck. And in this last episode of our best of series, we're talking about blocking your own success and what could really be going on behind the scenes. So stay tuned. Hey, hey there, friends. Welcome back to Unstuck. Thank you all so much for joining me. I'm Sean, your host on each and every episode here on Unstuck. And this is the final episode of our best of series. We've gone back in time and re-listened to the top five episodes in the past 94 as we work our way up to episode 100. This is an episode that was really fun to consider and talk about and really resonated with a lot of you. And it's not typical when we talk about success. It's not something we always consider, but really is something important for you to determine in your own life, especially if you're an entrepreneur, especially if you're working your way up some sort of corporate ladder and you're trying to build this life that includes success on your terms, whatever your definition of success is, and that is what is blocking you. And perhaps what is actually blocking you is your fear of that success. Not the fear of failure, not the fear of judgment, not the fear of it not working out, but that it actually will work out and what that means and looks like for you. So this is really something that we have to dive into and it was really a a great episode that I loved recording. Just a reminder, we will be back with a new fresh episode next week for episode 100. I'm so excited to be hitting that milestone with you all and we'll celebrate. We'll do something special. So make sure to stay tuned and listen to that. If you are enjoying this podcast, if any of the past 99 have been helpful for you, I would love to hear from you. I would love to connect with you. Please head over to my Instagram at Sean Miner. If you are an entrepreneur or wannabe future entrepreneur, make sure you head over to Unstuck Entrepreneur on Instagram and send me a DM. Let me know what's up. Tag me in any posts you do. I want to thank you personally. So please make sure to tag me. And if you do, if you share on your stories or on your feed somewhere on social media that you listen to the Unstuck podcast and you tag me, I will send you a free guided meditation on how to tap into your intuition. It's my favorite meditation to do. I do it all the time. And I will share that with you for free just because you shared the episode on your social. And same thing goes for leaving a review for the show. If you leave a review, take a screenshot before you submit it and send that to me in my DMs on Instagram, either at Sean Miner or on Stock Entrepreneur. I look at both. I will also include you on that free guided meditation to really tap into your intuition. Both of those are great ways to get a free meditation from me. All right, let's head back to episode 79 and find out if you're blocking your own success and why. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to the Unstuck Podcast. Thank you all so, so much for being here. I'm Sean, your host, here every single episode of Unstuck. Grateful for you. And hey, happy new year to you all. Happy 2021. I think, you know, we've talked about it on the show. Everyone's been talking about how 2020 is just like, let's put it in the past. Let's get it behind us. Wasn't that great of a year? I think a lot of us agree with that. But one thing that I have thought about this experience, everything that's happened over this 2020 situation, we'll call it, there's so much coming out of it. Uh, Whether it's something that we can see right now or not, maybe it's something we won't recognize for 
another few months or even another few years. But there is something coming out of this that is going to be really, really special and really, really good. Uh, An awakening, maybe, of sorts for a lot of us. And you may already be experiencing this in your life or maybe seeing others have this a little bit of awakening or or just learning more about themselves or finding out something new about their situation, trying new things, uh, trying new things in their relationship with their families, uh, families spending more time together. I I know I'm just preaching to the choir here when I say that there are some good things or there were some good things in 2020 and now there are some good memories coming from that experience And we can keep those and also hopefully the things that we have learned continue on with all of that in 2021 and beyond, which means that this year is going to be incredible. And we can take everything, all the the bad, all the things that we want to keep in 2020, we can keep them there. And we can take all of the amazing, wonderful things that did come out of that and bring them into a new year. So all of that to say very long, long long-winded way of saying, I hope you're as excited for 2021 as I am. I think we all are. And I wish you the best. And here on Unstuck, things will remain business as usual in 2021. Every Friday, we're going to do it. We're going to be here. We're going to talk about all the things, everything, basically whatever I want, <laughs> to be honest. It's really a wonderful thing. Uh, but all the things that will help you continue to get unstuck, whether you are in the middle of your journey, just starting your journey. And if you are in the middle of your journey and you have been in the middle of your journey for a while, then you're probably realizing it doesn't ever end. And if that is you too, then you know I will always be here. I've shared many a time here on the show that I'm still working through all of this stuff. Will always be, and you will be too. It is a never-ending process of continuing to get unstuck to become the version of you that you wish to be and to have the life that you want to have and to feel good and to help those around you and to live out your purpose and passion, all of that is a never-ending process, which is what we will continue to do here in 2021. Really excited. Got some really good ideas already coming at you in the next couple months. So be on the lookout for that. Now, you may be wondering, Sean, it's the beginning of the year. You're supposed to get us motivated, get us ready, help us create our goals and our plans for the year so that we actually achieve them. And I could totally do that. But if you think about it, I've kind of been doing that all year. Basically, every episode could be a New Year's episode here on Unstuck. And it should at this point be work that you're doing all the time anyway. So because it happens to be January 1st, not really all that much changes. And if that's the case, cool. If that's not the case, I have lots of episodes for you to go back and listen to. I think the one that I would recommend the most is how to create an intention versus a goal because January comes with a lot of goals and a lot of goals are not created with the right intention or with any intention behind it. So if we can start from that place of intention and really take the time to know what that is, then your goal is going to look a lot different. So go back and listen to that episode, creating an intention over a goal. I will link to that in the show notes because I don't know the exact episode number off the top of my head. But I think beyond that, every episode of Unstuck is something that you can listen to right now today to get you motivated, to give you homework of things that you can do in the new year for 2021 to be the year you really commit to being your best self and understanding more about yourself and your limiting beliefs and why you do the things you do and and breaking free from that. Definitely should be the year for that. But we already are doing that all the time here. So you have all the resources that you need in the past 77 episodes. And we're just going to continue on with that today and talk about a really interesting fear that you may not even know you have. And that is the fear of success. Fear of success. It sounds quite silly. And you're probably like, why would anyone 
be scared of making more money, of having a bigger house, of having a successful, wonderful relationship and family unit, uh, of moving up the ladder in their career. Why would that be scary? But I think a lot of you, if you really sit with it and really think of it, if it's not something that has happened to you, which it probably has, but if it hasn't, you would at least be able to understand how it could. And we're going to go into the nitty gritty on fear of success today. Before we do that, today, if you are on the, well, if you're listening to this when it airs, first of all, but second of all, if you are on the VIP wait list for Unstuck Entrepreneur, today is the day to check your email and get your special discount coupon code to get into the January class of my mentorship program for entrepreneurs, Unstuck Entrepreneur. So you can head uh, to your email if you are already on that list. If you are not, you can go to uh, seanminer.com slash unstuck biz and enroll there. And you also will have the opportunity on January 4th, which is coming up real quick. It's Monday. Again, if you're listening to this in the few days after it airs, then you still have the opportunity January 4th, 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time to join me live for 90 minutes of free business coaching, specifically around this idea of success and, and more specifically financial success in your business. If you would like to be there live or if you would like the recording of that, make sure you get signed up before January 4th at 11 a.m. so that you get on the list to get the the Zoom link and get the recording that comes afterwards. You will want to make sure you're on the list at seanminer.com slash money workshop anytime before January 4th. And I look forward to seeing you all in just a few days and chatting with you for 90 minutes. It's like my favorite thing. Podcasting is my second favorite thing. I love to do it. I think you guys can tell. Hopefully you guys can tell. But it's not live. That's the one thing missing from podcasting is that I really do enjoy live interaction. So that's why workshops really take the cake for me because I get to chat with you all live and answer your questions and just feel your presence. And we all have this collective energy that's amazing. It's a really good time. So seanminer.com slash money workshop. All right. So let's start with a quote from Brian Tracy that says, there are no limits to what you can accomplish except the limits you place on your own thinking. There are no limits to what you can accomplish except the limits you place on your own thinking. I love this. It really goes along with everything we talk about here on how your thoughts create your reality. Your thoughts can either hold you back or your thoughts can move you forward. But you have to get in touch with what's going on in your head, which if you have the conscious thinking, you can consciously figure out your thoughts then you can pretty much guarantee that that's stemming from a belief. So that's coming from your subconscious mind and how your subconscious mind is currently programmed. And that is really what I want to get into when we're talking about being afraid of success. It comes from that subconscious programming. Okay, let's dive into it. Some of what you will hear today is piggybacking on episode 71, How to Create Success in Business and Life. If you haven't listened to that episode, go back after this and listen to that and you'll really get a full picture. Um, And if you already have and you need a refresher, go back. It's one of my favorite episodes, episode 71. So there'll be some overlap, some new stuff to talk about. The first thing that is similar that I want to remind you of in this episode is that you get to decide what success means to you. And this is one big chunk of what we do in Unstuck Entrepreneur together is create our definition of success. Your definition of success is different from mine, is different from everyone else's out there. And it does not have to be financial abundance or what the outside world technically thinks success is. Now it can, 
if you want to, if that does make you feel successful, then great. It's, there's nothing wrong with having financial abundance as part of your definition of success. Nothing wrong. It's great, amazing, wonderful, perfect. But I do want to give you the option, if it feels better for you, to not include that or maybe only have that be part of it. Maybe for you, success looks like freedom, uh, flexibility in your schedule, having a better work-life balance, uh, having a job that you actually love to go to, like not having the Sunday blues ever again, which is something that I refuse to have ever again. I had it for like only maybe a couple of years. I was like, nope, I do not want to be this sad that the weekend is ending ever again. So that is a very big piece to my definition of success is to be excited to wake up on Monday morning. Uh, that might be the case for you, might not. Um, having autonomy maybe in your job uh, at, at work, having the flexibility and the ability to kind of work at your own pace, work on your own things, that trust factor is there, or uh, being recognized for the work you do. That might be a way that you feel successful is when you do get that recognition. So there's so many different things that can uh, make up your definition of success. It also may have nothing to do with your job or your business at all. It may be having a successful relationship or a successful family dynamic or being a successful parent. I don't know what, even what that means, but maybe you have a definition of that in your head. Just wanting to get, put out some ideas that success can look different and will look different for every single person. So I want to make sure that you actually even know what that means to you. Why don't we do a little exercise? I know some of you are driving or on a treadmill, working out, uh, have your kids in front of you, something like that where you cannot close your eyes. So don't Close your eyes if it means putting anyone in danger. But if you can, even if you stop, if you're on a walk and you just stop right now and just really quickly close your eyes so we can do this exercise. Now take a few deep breaths. We want to get calm. We want to get out of our bubble of day-to-day -day life so we can really sink into our body. So make sure you're taking nice deep breaths in and out. See if you can sink deeper into yourself as you exhale. Now, in your mind's eye, picture yourself on a day in the future when you wake up and immediately think to yourself, I did it. I'm here. I feel successful. Get that picture clearly in your mind's eye. Really see it. Really feel it. Get as much detail as you can. And now answer these questions. What is happening in your life on that day to make you feel that way? Where are you? What are you going to spend your day doing? Who is with you or around you? What kind of words come out of your mouth? Like, what do you say? What do you talk about? How do you present yourself to others? So I just want you to really start seeing that version of you, seeing all the nuances, all the nooks and crannies, really getting a good picture of what is going on in your life to make you wake up and say that and feel that. And that brings me to the most important thing, which is how does it feel? How do you feel? When you have those words that come up for you, you wake up and you think, I did it. I'm here. I'm successful. What does that feeling of success feel like to you? Is it warm and tingly? Is it a buzzing sensation all throughout your body? Is it a swirling sensation right at your heart center or maybe in your gut? What does it feel like to be that version of you. Okay, now I don't want you to have your eyes closed any longer. I want you to get back to your life, what you're doing while podcast listening. So come back to reality. 
if you didn't get a chance to do that or you want to go back and and do it again to the point where you can feel it because that's really important. And if you are really visualizing it in the depth and complexity that we're trying to get to, then you will feel that specific feeling that success arises in you. And that's where we want to get to. Also, I would love it. And I think it'd be great if you journaled out the answers to those questions that I asked, like what is happening in your life to make you feel that way? Where are you? Who are you with? What words come out of your mouth? How are you presenting yourself? All of that stuff we'll do together in Unstuck Entrepreneur, but you can also journal it out on your own and see if you can uh, get a really good specific idea of what your definition of success is because of the answers to those questions. So if you want to go back and do this later, head back to, I think it's going to be around like 15-ish minutes in, and you can do that again. Uh, That's very general. So you may have to jump around a little bit to find the actual start. It's not a lot of time either, so maybe it will take you a little bit more time so you can pause it to where you really get to that point where you can see it and feel it and experience it to the point of getting that uh, sense of success within you. Visualization, it's so powerful. We need to be doing it when we do and when you get to the point where you have that feeling, that's what we're really after when we visualize When you get that feeling, that means that you have created the vibration of success, your future success, in yourself now, which means you become a match to that vibration of your successful self in the future. Vibrational match. That means we start attracting that into our lives. Okay, so that's why visualization is important. If you didn't listen to the episode on how your superpower is visualization and why, head to episode 51, go listen to that. It's a really good one and talking about one of my favorite tools of all time. All right, so now we know our individual definition of success. Keep in mind, it's fluid. It might change every day. It might change every month. As you grow, your definition of success will continue to grow. So be prepared for that as well. It's all expected and great and wonderful. Now let's get into the reason why you might be pushing that very thing that you are so excited that you can see in your future away, further and further away. Why? Because that version of ourselves is scary. We are afraid of it. The fear of success is the most powerful fear of them all. And it's the sneakiest too, because it, like I said, seems so crazy that we would ever be scared of making more money, of having a thriving and bustling business, getting a big promotion, Um, having a bigger audience and more eyes on our work, being in an amazing relationship, being healthy and fully well, feeling confident in our purpose in life, all these things that are now in your definition of success, why would we be afraid of them? They all sound so amazing. They sound like the exact things we've been working towards that we want so badly. But it's actually quite common to be afraid of success. And it might sound something like, what if I'm judged for my success? What if the success I find comes with more stress and work? What if I get overwhelmed with my level of success? What if I can't live up to everyone's expectations of me once I'm there? What if I still eventually fail And then I have that many more eyes on me when I do. It's just that much more significant of a failure when I'm coming from a level of success. What if success changes me? What if I become greedy and self-absorbed from this level of success? What if success actually hurts me? You get the idea. All of these what ifs, all the what ifs that really come down to being afraid 
of feeling a way we don't want to feel, experiencing something we don't want to experience. And we know that that all comes from our subconscious mind. It comes from the identity that we have created about ourselves and is now part of our subconscious mind. It's now something that we believe to be true about ourselves and our minds will continue to make that the case for us. We've talked about identity before. It is back in episode 60. Definitely go back and listen to that if you haven't already or or get a refresh. Um, Really important, I think, to understand what your identity is. And that episode will help you do that. So go back and listen to episode 60. But little refresher, your identity is compromised of all the stories you believe to be true about yourself. Now, when it comes to success in particular, it's all the stories that you believe to be true about yourself and success. So you in relationship to success, whether that be financial, career-wise, in your relationship, as a parent, whatever it may be that you have determined will make you feel successful, and then your beliefs about that as it relates to you and your ability to do so or be that person. So these beliefs or stories, we use the words interchangeably here on Unstuck, may sound something like this. I'm not good with money. The only way I can make money is by working hard. I don't deserve success. Success is reserved for really smart people, and I'm not smart enough. I'm an introvert, so having a big audience is scary. I don't know enough to help as many people as it takes to build success. If you're successful, it just adds more stress to your life and I don't deal with stress well. I always get judged when I put myself out there. I'm not likable, so there's no way I can get enough people to like me and my work to build the success I want. You, again, get the idea here. Stories about us as it relates to our definition of success and why it's not possible or why it would hurt us or why it would make us vulnerable or it would harm us or put us in danger. All of the things that we say to ourselves, sometimes without us even knowing it, remember that these are not necessarily things that you consciously know are going on in your head. These might be things that are under the surface that you need to start digging up to acknowledge that they are there, to bring awareness to your limiting beliefs. So for most of us, getting to that next level means completely unraveling your current reality to create a new one, like completely unraveling your past identity, what you're currently holding on to to create a new one that is in alignment with that next level version of you, that version of you that has the success you want. Because, of course, if you already had the identity of that next level version of you, you'd be living it. You would already be there living it today. So that means there is a gap between your current identity and the new identity you need to start creating. And success challenges that current identity. And your subconscious mind, it doesn't like it, does not like it. In fact, it's going to do everything possible to make sure that it doesn't happen, that you don't create a new identity or you don't go outside of your old identity. Because it is going to assume, because our subconscious mind doesn't know good or bad, right or wrong, successful or not successful, So it is just going to assume it's going to do its job to make sure that you are protected, that you are safe, that you are in your bubble of security that is your identity. And that next level version of success isn't in that bubble, which means every time you try, it's not going to happen. 
and this is if we are kind of doing the the practical step by step like what everyone's telling us we should be doing to get to that thing and we can't get there because you're still stuck in that old identity that doesn't match up with your new level of success that new version of you and I know you know this is coming how do we do this we do the inner work you have to do the inner work on yourself to see if you can find out what your identity currently is what are you currently expressing through your identity what stories and beliefs are there that is creating that identity for you and how is that different from the next level version of you the identity that you would need to have to be that version of you what is between those two that gap we need to start bridging that gap and the way to do that is to find out what you're currently holding on to especially when it comes to success m- money beliefs entrepreneurship climbing the ladder your ability to be successful how you think of yourself how you see yourself this is the first step to success it's also it has to has to has to be the first step to entrepreneurship to having a business at least if you want it to be successful we have to start here and create our new identity do that inner work get rid of those those beliefs that you've been holding on to that have been continuing to keep you in this old pattern that is how we step into the new version of ourself that has all the success in the world however that looks to you because here's the deal you will always 100% of the time act in accordance to your identity you will behave in accordance to whatever identity you are currently holding on to whether it's the past or the future and so the first step being to create that next level identity is what will then bring you there again there is no other way i say that all the time on this podcast there is no other way once you do that work as you can see your identity is created by a bunch of limiting beliefs many of which we latched on to years ago, like years, years, years ago, back before even the age of seven, when our subconscious mind was being developed. And now it's our opportunity to work on those and to see them for what they are. Now I know, and I talked about this in episode 71, this really resonated with a lot of you, which is that we believe success doesn't look like us or we don't match up to how success looks. So that might be one for you to start looking into about yourself, but it also could be things like success is scary or hard work. It comes with consequences. It means we have to be vulnerable. It's not something that can happen to us. We're just not capable of that kind of success. We don't have the ability to be successful. We just don't have what it takes, or it's just gonna be too hard. All of these might be stories that you have, again, about yourself and success, the combination of the two. I have a few examples, personal examples, to share with you to hopefully help you get started in this work for yourself. One of mine is something I still am working on every single day because I have the belief that I have to work hard to be successful. I have proven this wrong time and time again, but I still have that belief. It's deeply ingrained from a very, very young age. So it's something I'm continuously working on and probably will be for a while. But for me, my definition of success is freedom, flexibility, peace, and ease. So if I were to wake up and say, I did it, I am here, I'm successful, it would be a day that I went on a long hike in the mountains, I took a nap, I made dinner with my partner, we relaxed in front of the fire, I did not touch my phone or computer all day long, only to find out at the end of the day, when I just do a quick check-in, that my business is running smoothly, 
all is well, all is thriving. I made some sales and I got to step away. That just sounds so lovely. Now, my identity is still not quite there. It still doesn't quite get there. I'm very often finding myself working more than I need to be or want to be, but it feels good for that past identity of mine, for that belief. And so it's something I have to continue. Like I said, I prove it wrong. I prove it wrong. I see it when it happens and I prove it wrong. I see it when it happens and I prove it wrong. To bring in that new identity, to bring in the identity of someone who doesn't have their computer on their lap 24-7, which honestly, I think I was doing a lot better before the pandemic. And then now since there's nothing to do, I might as well just work. And uh, unfortunately, my partner has the same idea. And so we both just work. It's it's crazy. But uh, we're working on it. We're both working on it together. And it's going to take some time. It will probably be a lifelong thing that I have to balance out, that I have to work on shifting that belief in myself and finding that new identity of this person who can take days or weeks away from their computer with everything being just fine. Another example that I've worked my way out of, but this was something that really plagued me at the beginning of my Uh, business. And it's something I see that happens a lot in entrepreneurs, especially those that are trying to gain an online presence, which if you have a business these days and you want it to thrive, you need an online presence. It's a really important piece to the puzzle these days. And for me, when I started, I was trying to take my business online, but I was so scared of doing so, of like putting my work on to the interwebs. I think I've told this story here before. If not, definitely an entrep- unstuck entrepreneur. I will never forget how scared I was to push the publish button on my first blog post thinking, oh my gosh, I have something out on the World Wide Web. Everyone's going to see it. I'm officially making myself super vulnerable, really putting myself out there. This is such a big deal. I was so nervous. I think it took me like days to actually do it after I had had it all written and I would just open my computer and stare at it and then close it and then come back and try to do it again and I couldn't do it. So I finally hit publish, got up the courage to do it, put myself out there and nobody read it. Nobody. I think my mom read it. I think still to this day, I think it's actually still up on the interweb somewhere and nobody's read it. <laughs> so um, it was a really good lesson in, and it really helped me start being able to put myself out there. Um, it was kind of, again, one of those proving yourself wrong things, whereas like that experience really helped me prove that wrong, that when I put myself out there, I'm going to be judged. I'm going to have um, all these eyes on me immediately. Am I really ready for that? Can I really do it? Uh, so it, really showed me that it was more of a process, that it doesn't just happen immediately. And then that really got my wheels spinning to where it was like, okay, now I actually need to work at this. It doesn't just happen. You actually have to do work and really put some effort into getting people to want to like learn from you and to really find you. So it kind of changed my tune. But I really was worried about that. I was so scared that I would become overwhelmed by the amount of people that were suddenly coming onto my website to read my blog post and it would get some hate mail, some haters, and I would have to deal with that. And it just went along with this identity that I'd had for years and years and years since childhood about when you draw attention to yourself, you are at risk of being judged. And I didn't want that. So I really had to move beyond that. It took me creating a new identity that was in alignment with this idea or what I really actually wanted was to help more people. And so I had to really embrace this identity of my presence here is helping someone. And that is the most important thing. So took time, honestly, and 
it really helped me just to do it anyway. Like I said, once I had that first one out, I realized that it actually took a lot more <laughs> before you do start getting the attention that could potentially put you into a place of being judged. And at that point, I was so beyond it, just so over it that I didn't care. But I had to continue doing it. I had to continue proving myself wrong and putting myself out there regardless for me to change that identity to being one that puts themselves out there and creates amazing content and helps other people with that content no matter what. And it's been really great ever since. And it's something that I really truly want to help other entrepreneurs experience too, that ability to freely put themselves out there knowing it will help someone else. All right, let's go back to this fear of success quickly because there is another side of this coin, which is that you may also be afraid of how others perceive your success, in which case this is more about projecting your beliefs about success onto others and assuming that they have the same beliefs that you do. So it may be that you're afraid of how others in your life will take this change in identity that you're going to have because you've always been the one that's struggling or broke or stressed out or always trying to figure out a new business idea, whatever your old identity is, you may be afraid of how others are going to perceive that change in you. So that's something to consider as well. But regardless, we need to remember one thing. Your next level self, so what you just visualized as that person that wakes up and feels successful, is currently outside of your comfort zone. You've never been there before. You've never been that person. So it is outside of your identity bubble. And your mind, as it stands today, doesn't want to go there. So you are in charge of doing that work to take you there, doing that inner work. How do we do it? I have a few ideas for you. One, you have to break from your identity and program your new identity into your subconscious mind. You are in charge of the identity that you create for yourself. It does not control you. It is not the one in charge. So the vision you had for yourself, the thoughts you had, the words you said, how you felt, those need to become your new norm before that level of success even shows up. Like I said, when you get to that place within you, now when you start becoming that new identity, now that level of success has no other place to go but to you, directly into your life. So you have to embody that version of you for it to come to you. It is not the other way around. So I would recommend doing these daily visualizations of that future self. Do them daily. In Unstuck Entrepreneur, we do this every day for five minutes a day for six weeks this visualization, that is what has been proven to start rewiring your brain. That much time, that many weeks. It's the five by six rule. That is how you reprogram your identity is to do this visualization practice every day. You can also journal on that future self and how it feels, what's happening. Super important to start embodying that new version of yourself, which you can do through this visualization practice. You also need to do some limiting belief work. We talk about that here all the time on Unstuck. See if you can start becoming more aware of the beliefs that are behind that identity that you're currently holding. Where did they come from? How did they originate? How else are they playing out in your life? How do they show up in your actions, your behaviors, and most importantly, your self-talk? I want you to bring all of this into your awareness so that you can start calling them out. You can see them in action. And when you see them in action, you can do the opposite. You can start proving them wrong and calling them out. And at the same time as doing those two things, I want you to start taking action. Taking action towards your new identity. 
what would that version of you do today? And start acting like it today. Start moving from that place of your new identity today. Remember, we always 100% of the time behave in accordance with our identity. So you have the option of what identity you want to act in accordance to. It can be the old one or it can be the new one. One question I love to uh, kind of put this into perspective and you might have to switch this up for your specific field, whatever you're working on when it comes to success. But for entrepreneurs, I always ask this and I think it's really powerful. If you woke up and overnight had accumulated 100,000 Instagram followers and 100,000 people on your email list, what would you do? What emotions would you have? Would you act differently than you are right now in your business? Really important to ask yourself those questions and that will show you what your next level identity would do and if there's any discrepancy from where you currently are, from your current identity. And what can you do to start acting as that version of yourself now to really solidify that new identity? So remember, what would you do? What emotions would you have? Would you act differently than you are right now in your business? And then start doing it. You can also try things like hypnotherapy and neuro-linguistic programming where we have a whole tool to do some belief change work. Really exciting, something I'm almost certified to do. I have a few tests to take. And I'm going to be sharing more about how to do that in future episodes and I'm going to add it to my practice in 2021 so it'll be accessible to all of you. Uh, but I'll also be doing some one-on-one work potentially too. So be on the lookout for that. If you do feel like you're really stuck in your limiting beliefs, like you just can't seem to get them to budge or you can't seem to prove them wrong and really step out of your bubble and do something that goes against those limiting beliefs, then you might need some deeper work. And that is where this kind of stuff comes in. And hypnotherapy is really wonderful for that. It basically takes that five by six rule for visualization, which is five minutes a day for six weeks, and cuts that into like maybe a week, (laughs) maybe at most. Uh, It's really powerful. So anyway, be on the lookout for that. And with that, we're wrapping up. Uh, What I really wanted you to get out of this episode is just showing you that if you're trying to become successful in any area of your life and you feel like you're coming up against a wall, well, that wall is your identity. And nothing is going to change until you work to change that. That is what I want you to get out of this. I want you to understand that this work on your mindset has to come first. And not only comes first, but then also goes along with everything else you do. It's kind of with you every step of the way to this successful life you're creating. All right, so your homework for today, take five minutes every day this week to put yourself into that future place where you are living out your successful life. So you are going to visualize every day this week for five minutes that future version of you that's super successful in all areas of their lives and get as detailed with it as you can to the point that you feel it in your physical body. All right, my friends, that will wrap up this episode. Remember, this is your last chance. I'm not talking about this again. If you are listening to this remotely close to when it airs, you can join me January 4th at 11 a.m. to do some 90 minutes of live coaching for your business and your financial success. And you can also join me forever. (laughs) You can become a mentee, a student in my mentorship program for entrepreneurs That basically doesn't ever end, but we are taking enrollments starting today and going until next Friday. So you have one week. You can sign up at seanminer.com slash unstuck biz. We do all of this and then also apply this work to our practical, tangible, step-by-step approach to building our business. So we take what we learn about ourselves. We do the inner work. 
and then we get the external result from that inner work. And I go through all of the different tools you can use and ways to build your business and attract clients, attract people, attract money into your business. So we do that all together over there, seanminer.com slash unstuck biz. Happy to have you. And I'll see a lot of you live on Monday. All right, everybody. Until next time. 